Yes, ah uh, yes, like I always said, we're doing it, we're doing it right here in the Alamo City, 91.7 HD2, KROVFM Radio. My host, my, my guest today, my guest today is Pastor Kevin Duhon. And it's just good to know that I knew his grandfather. That's right. He's a pastor right here in the city. Without further delay, I'm going to bring Pastor up. And Pastor, yes, sir. you're doing it in the city. I'm here. We're here. We're here. The Rock Fellowship is here. All right. Now, I'm, I, for the first time, I've seen you, and this was a couple of weeks ago at Pastor Rick Hawkins' church, yes. and um, talking about uh, racism. Yes. yes. Okay. But we're not just going to talk about racism today. We're going to talk about connection. Come on. Okay. Because in the connection of God, which we all know, He can change the hearts of men and women. And for a young man, let me let me start off by asking. Let me start off by asking. What is it that drew you to Christ? Wow, that's a loaded question for me. Uh, I grew up in church. I grew up around church. I am generations deep in church. Uh, however, like most young men, I took my time and I rebelled. Like every, like well, like many. I won't say like everyone else, but I rebelled. I did my own thing. Tried my hand at, at several different things. However. <clears throat> What I noticed is that I knew church, but I didn't know God. Mm. And so I went through this quest of trying to find God. I worshiped Allah for two and a half years during my high school years, went away to college to Prairie View A&M University. And while I was there at PV, it's a true story, true story, and I hope your listeners are ready for it. I was <laughs> drunk and I was high. Mm. And Soul Train came on. All right. And Kirk Franklin was doing stomp <laughs> on Soul Train. And I was watching it. And I called my mom and I said, hey, is that Kirk Franklin on uh, Soul Train? She said, yeah. I said, that's that video that they've been playing on MTV too, right? She said, yeah. She said, well, he'll be in San Antonio in uh, May. Do you want to go? I said, yeah, give me a ticket. <laughs> At the Kirk Franklin concert, I gave my life to Jesus. Glory to God. And uh, since that time, it's just been on. It's, just, it's been good. Um, what drew me was the authenticity of the fact that, um, that I wasn't looking for religion. I wasn't looking for a denomination. I wasn't looking for a church. I was looking for God. I needed that, that a sense of purpose and I found it. I finally found it. He found me and pulled me out of the hog pen I was in. And uh, and since that time, I've been drawing close to him since. Now, you used to get drunk, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, off that old wine. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but when you change partners, now you get drunk off some new wine. That's right. That's okay. right. Talk to me about that new wine. Well, when I was around in 1998, I was just searching for God. We had, I had been saved now for about a year. I'm running hard after him and I'm excited, but I knew something was missing. I knew something was missing. So I just went on this two week fast. No one taught me about it. No one told me about it. I went on a two week fast searching for the spirit of God. Mm. And I'm not kidding. I was watching TBN <laughs> Bishop T.D. Jakes was preaching a message about the centurion servant. Mm -hmm. And while he was preaching, he ran out in the audience and laid hands on the people in the audience. And as he was praying for them, something jumped in my belly. <laughs> and, uh, and the word declares that out of your belly flows rivers of living water. Yes. And uh, I ran into my bedroom. My mom was washing dishes. She saw me run into my bedroom. And, uh, and I just began to pray. I began to speak in other tongues. And this, this thing just bubbled up on the inside of me. And uh, I'll never forget, I walked out of my room. My mom said, you okay? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, all right. <laughs> but she had knew and I knew that that new wine had filled me up. And, but God had to do some things in that two, uh, two week period of fasting and prayer. I had to forgive some people, I had to let some things go because you can't put new wine in old bottle skins. And so he cleaned me up in two weeks. I didn't even know what, that's what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, you know, the power of God came for me and it's been, it's been good. So surely you can say, right now is sweet. Yeah, definitely. And my joy is complete. Is complete. That's what I'm saying. That's right. <laughs> now, you're a young man. Uh-huh. Mm. Now, you look like you're 18 years old. <laughs> I appreciate that because I'm bald in no time. <laughs> I appreciate that. No, but at the age of 35? Yes, 35, almost 36. You're pastoring. Uh-huh. Okay. You, your wife. Yes. Um. Uh, and just reaching the hearts of men. Yes. yes. Okay. Now, in this day and time, we have men. I've got to ask you. Well, go ahead. 
we have men that are hurting, <coughs> men that have been carrying birth in the church. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, I'm Baptist church, Catholic, no, no matter right, of method, course. you know. Of course. But they're hurting, and they need that cooling water. Mm -hmm. But they don't know, they think that everything's okay with them. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with the hurting man that don't know that he's hurting? Mm. Well, as a man, as a man who's had experiences that some I'm proud of, some of them I'm not, um, life is full of choices. It's full of the repercussions of those choices. And over time, you've got to make some decisions that's going to affect you negatively or impact you in a difficult way. And so even at our church, we have a lot of men. Um, fortunately, our church is, is very young, but there's a lot of men. There's a lot of men in our church, a lot of serving men. But everyone didn't come in with that heart. And so what we've done is, is we create opportunity, space, and time to minister to those needs one-on-one. -on -one. I think for men, you got to have transparency, but you got to be able to talk real to a man. you got to be able to let him know that you really care enough to sit down and listen, that he can be vulnerable with you. Um, even in my own personal life, there was many, many challenges that I had. Uh, I didn't trust people, um, especially leaders, you know, very very difficult time trusting leaders and trusting those in authority uh, because of some of the wounds and personal wounds that I had suffered in my life. Um, but I learned how to just uh, be transparent with people. And I think you have to be transparent with me. And you got you to talk to me in a loving manner. You got to be stern and direct. But at the same time, you have to be willing to listen, help them find the root cause of what's causing them, um, or what's you know, what's, what's, what's being difficult in their lives, helping them find that root cause and helping them identify it and forgive. I think for, for men, most of our problem is not forgiving. We have a difficult time forgiving. We label something, we say, you know what? This is what it is. You cause me pain, I'll shut you down, I'll shut you out. But with men, you gotta learn how to forgive. And that's one of the most difficult messages um, to share with men. But I found out when you forgive, when you let the past go, when you let that ex-wife go, when you let uh, your father go, or, or the one who, who abandoned you, the one who even touched you inappropriately as a child, when you let that person go, yes, yes. and the true freedom of God can come upon you. Uh, forgiveness is not about them. I found it over life that people are snoring, they turn it over at night, <laughs> they don't even remember what they did to you sometimes. But we're up, pacing the floor, angry, bitter. Uh, taking things from one relationship to the next, one marriage to the next marriage, hurting people. Uh, but when you learn how to forgive, true freedom can come. And so that's been our approach with men is, is forgiveness and transparency by letting them see that pastor is not perfect. I've made my mistakes. Our church knows I'll tell them about my struggles and uh, past or present in a minute because I don't want them to think for one second that I'm Superman. Uh, now, that's a limit to what you can disclose. Yes, all right. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm very transparent. And I think men gravitate to transparency. They gravitate to honesty. They're looking for something that's real. So Jesus is real, so we give him that. If not for his grace, come on. where would we be? Exactly. San Antonio Global Listeners right here with me. We have Pastor Kevin Duhart. He's a pastor of the Rock Fellowship, San Antonio. Don't go away. We're going to be talking a little bit more about the Rock Fellowship. And right now, coming to you live, is Israel and New Breed singing, If Not For Your Grace.